Howdy folks, Juliana from the Science Zone here, and today we're going to capture us some wild yeast. All you need is some flour, some water, and a whole lot of time. So saddle up, because we're going to make some sourdough. Yeast is a type of fungi that likes to feed on sugars. Scientists have identified over 1,500 different types of yeast. It's commonly found on the skins of fruits, vegetables, in the soils, and even on the skin of humans and animals. Now when we take flour and water, what happens is that water starts to break down the starches in yeast and turns it into sugar. So if we add this water, the yeast will start feeding on this mixture. And as they do, it's going to release carbon dioxide. That makes a bunch of little bubbles. And when you have conventional yeast, your active dry yeast like this, when you bake normal bread, that's what's happening. And that's what causes your dough to rise. So we're gonna leave this for a little bit. I'm gonna put a coffee filter over it so those little wild yeasties can get in. We're gonna see what happens. So if we have those active starter cultures in this regular yeast, what makes what I just did so special? What makes wild yeast different? Well, for starters, it's gonna taste a little bit different. It's not gonna taste quite as cultured. It's not gonna be your white bread you buy off the shelves in the grocery store. But that's not the only thing that's happening in sourdough. Along with those little yeasties, you've got bacteria that are growing in there. These are called lactobacilli, and they're the good bacteria. They're the same things that make your yogurt or your sour cream have that little bit of tang. These bacteria convert the sugars into lactic acid, so they're eating the same thing those yeasts are, and they convert it into lactic acid. This lowers the pH of the solution, making it have that tang, that sour taste. It also helps keep harmful bacteria out. A lot of bacteria don't like living in acidic environments, so when these lactobacilli drop the pH, it keeps other bacteria that would make us sick out. The yeast don't mind the acidic environment, and they do just fine. So you have this happy little family eating on all the sugars in there. Lactobacilli also help break down some of the things that are in flour that are hard for humans to digest, and for some people can even be toxic. For that reason, it's suggested that sourdough breads are actually easier for people who have gluten intolerances to digest. Since those bacteria have already started the work of breaking down the flour, our bodies don't have to work as hard, so it makes those who are sensitive to gluten um, have less work to do. These bacteria also have some antifungal properties. When you leave bread out too long and it gets moldy, the bacteria in the sourdough starter help prevent that from happening. So sourdough bread even has a longer shelf life. There's all sorts of really cool things happening in this little bubbly yeasty concoction. Let's check back in on our starter. So it's been a few days and now we've got this guy. Sourdough is one of the most ancient forms of bread making, likely starting in Egypt around 1500 BC. This method of bread making spread across Europe and was the most common form of bread until the widespread cultivation of baker's yeast in the mid 1800s. French bread makers introduced this method of bread making to the United States around 1849 during the California Gold Rush. And then it was carried up to Alaska during the Klondike Gold Rush 50 years later. During the Klondike Gold Rush, sourdough became the preferred method of bread making for the Stampeders, as packaged yeast had a tendency to die when exposed to harsh temperatures. Wild yeast in a sourdough starter was hardier and could withstand the abuse, making it perfect for the harsh winters of the Yukon. Sourdough starters can stay alive indefinitely as long as they're really well taken care of. You just have to feed it um, about once a month if you keep it in the fridge or if you keep it on your counter every few days. There's a woman in Newcastle, Wyoming who has a starter that's over 130 years old. That's longer than Wyoming has been a state. Now, we're gonna attach a way that you can make your very own sourdough starter. So please uh, share with us some of the creations you end up making from it. Enjoy, uh, I suggest that you enjoy the fruits of your labor, toasted with a little bit of butter. Cheers.